Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. You are seeing a whole new angle today. <laughs> we are gonna do something that I have been putting off for months. Like no kidding, months and months. I really need to purge my stamps. So behind me, you can see my rather large stamp collection. Most of this is close to my heart stamps. And I am well over, I think, 700 sets, maybe more, and it definitely needs to be gone through because I have two bins like this of new stamps from the past year. That's why I say I've been putting this off for months. Uh, from the last year, a lot of Christmas stamps, stamps from like last Thanksgiving, even some from last summer that I need to get into my storage here. And the only way to do that is to purge some stamps. So I hope you'll come along with me on this journey and uh, watch as I purge my stamps. It's very painful. I don't like to get rid of anything, but if I'm gonna bring in new stuff, some of the stuff I have needs to go and I need to decide what those sets are gonna be and why. So I'm gonna share some of that process with you today. So if you've watched my craft room tour, then you saw this shelf. This is an Ikea Calyx shelf. And these are the old style close to my heart organizers that are just packed with stamps. I have my stamps categorized um, by like the categories and then I've numbered the box. So I also number my sets so I know when I'm putting them away what box they go into. So you can see some of my kind of categories, categories, fall, Halloween, scrapbooking. There's some sets that I just use for scrapbooking like with titles and things. And then over here we have vintage for him, baby, kids, love, labels, tags, patterns, flair, and icons. A lot of like miscellaneous stuff kind of ends up in that one if it doesn't have another home. Sentiments, that one I know I need to purge because it is packed. Travel, animals, summer various people birthday so again with the various i have some that just don't neatly fit into a category and that's where they can end up and then i have a box for christmas i do have another video that shows my evernote catalog and how i store all of these digitally in evernote so that i can easily search and find my stamp sets i'll make sure to link that down in the description for you guys as well as i will link my craft room tour in case you haven't seen it so today's job is finding room for all of these sets i went through and already entered them into evernote and then I also went ahead and labeled them. So if you can see that number six there, I know that goes into box number six. So whether it's putting it away for the first time or after I have used it and I'm trying to file all my stamp sets away, I know that that goes in box number six. So I'm going to lay these all out on the floor and put them into their categories so I know how many sets I have to put in each box and then I can figure out uh, how many sets I need to purge from that box in order to fit in the new ones. Because let's be honest, I'm not gonna get rid of any more that I absolutely have to. And once I get those stamps purged out, I'm going to have to remove them from Evernote as well. Because there's nothing more annoying than thinking you own a stamp and then you go to find it and realize it's one that you've purged. All right, let's start with the first stack. This is for box number two. So in box number two, I have vintage for him, baby and kids, and love. So this one, definitely vintage. Uh, all of these I've marked with box number two. Definitely kids. That one's kids. There's one for love. Another one for love. So love, Valentine's Day, those kinds of things. And then this one, I thought I would file it under uh, vintage because of the old truck, but it could go in like several different sections including like various because it kind of has things for all seasons in it but i decided to go with vintage because of the truck so now let's open up the box and see where we can fit these in <laughs> so i do not have my categories labeled i do have stamps in here from other brands they're just all put in here by category now i see here i have the kids ones i have like unicorns and magical things so I'm going to put these ones in there with that 
and that fits in there not too tight it's getting snug but uh, it still fits and then let's look in this side this is where I have all my love and Valentine's Day and I think oh yeah those will fit in there and then on this side is where I have more like vintage and Father's Day and those kinds of things those fit too I don't have to purge anything in this box, which makes me super excited. Although next time I go to add here, I'm probably going to have to do a little bit of thinning because it's getting pretty tight. Don't like to have them too tight in here. Otherwise, it's really hard to dig around and find what I'm looking for. I kind of have everything sectioned off, but it's not labeled. And what I like about this system is I don't need to file them by number or anything else. That's just not the way I like to organize. I like to just go into a section, see all of my options in that one category, and then uh, make my decisions from there. And most of the time I use Evernote to look it up anyways. Okay, on to box number three. That is fall and Halloween and scrapbooking. So I have this library set here. That's definitely going into scrapbooking. Same with this set. I bought this for all the really great title options in there. There we have a fall set, another fall set, another fall set. I love this one actually. And another fall set. This was such a good one. Has solid stamps and then these little veins are actually um, thin cuts. So. You have thin cuts that cut out the leaves, a solid stamp for the leaf, and then the veins. And I think this one is still available. I need to use this one some more because there's so many fun techniques you could do with it. In fact, I have a video on my channel where I did a shaker with this. I'll link that below for you. And then this Thanksgiving one, which I never got around to using last year, that has like some really funny sayings and just some good Thanksgiving sayings on it. So most of the ones going into here I guess are fall, which is good because I think my scrapbooking section is pretty full. Well, this wasn't as nearly as scary as I thought. I thought for sure by now I'd be purging tons, but so far, so good. Now we have box number four and I know I have to do some purging in here because this is my flowers, bugs, spring, uh, Easter usually goes in here and I just have so many. I love florals, so I end up with tons of floral stamp sets. So I know we're gonna have to do some thinning in here. Yeah, this one is already almost completely packed and I know I have some sets that should go in here that are in another spot because they're being used for a project. So I have even less space in this container than what it looks like. So I'm looking for a couple things when I'm thinning this out. How much have I used this set? Uh, how much do I make projects around this theme? This has a really nice banner, but it doesn't have a thin cut and is kind of like a wedding themed set. I think I could probably let that go. Another thing to consider is I really love this set. It's beautiful. It was a stamp of the month, but that also means that, you know, if I use it in a project, I can't show, I can't really show it to you guys because then you can't get this set. So probably the chances of me using this is pretty slim. I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile. It's a really beautiful sunflower set. I think I'm gonna keep this. This set came inside a workshop. I haven't really used it since that workshop. And I have other sets that have clouds and grass and things on them. So I think I'm gonna get rid of this one. This set is really nice. It has some layered stamps for florals. It doesn't have thin cuts. And uh, I really haven't gotten much use out of it. So I think I'm gonna let this one go. Same with this one, the style is pretty cutesy and I've used it a little bit, but not a ton. It's probably not one that I would reach for. So I'm gonna let that one go too. Okay, I have a couple more kind of small sets here. This was from a workshop and I don't see me reaching for that. And same for this one, uh, probably not one that I would reach for right away. So I'm gonna let these go. And that should be enough to get these into my box. So I could keep going and purging more of my stamps, but I think I'm gonna leave it there and see if I can fit everything comfortably back in here. All right, that fits. I'm not gonna purge anymore. Like I told you, this is my least favorite thing to do 
because usually I have a good memory of what stamps I have. And sometimes I go looking for those stamps that I have purged and then they are gone and I am none too happy. <laughs> but keep in mind, I buy way more because I do sell stamps and I use them in my art all the time and I have to keep a good flow of things coming in, which means a flow of things going out too. Okay, we are in box number five, which is my sentiments. I love collecting sentiments. I love having tons of options just because you never know what size or shape or if it needs to be scripty or printed or whatever. There's tons of different versions of a sentiment you might want. So these are the ones that are coming into my collection. This one here was from the Cherished Card Making Workshop and it has this big background thin cut. I actually took the thin cut out of here, put it into my thin cut storage, like my die storage, just because I know I will be looking to use that for other things, not necessarily with this set. Then I have some of these smaller ones that just have one really beautiful sentiment on them. These are from the current annual catalog and I was tempted to maybe squeeze a few into one set. I'm still thinking about maybe doing that because I could probably put two or three into each set but I just haven't yet. I'll see how they fit into here and then I have a double set and these are awesome really big sentiments. They were from a special called Sending Love and Laughter and they're really good for inside cards which I'm always looking for good inside sentiments. So I'm just gonna have a browse through here and see if there's anything that I wanna get rid of. All right, so I am looking for sets that either I have never used, I haven't used in a really long time, or they just don't do it for me. Or like this one, I love those large uh, sentiments, but I have never used this. And this is several years old at this point. I think largely because a lot of it is like wedding themed and I make very few wedding themed cards. Flowers, they're okay. I have other flowers that I like way more. So I think I'm going to let that one go. This one I have used a bit in the past. I like that it has all the like mother, mom, father, dad, daughter, nephew, step, in-law, cousin, uncle. Like it has all those different variations but I haven't reached for this in literally years. So I can probably let that go. Same with this one, I've gotten some really good use. You can see how stained this is, but it's probably not one that I will be reaching for. So I can let that go too. Anything that has like nice scripty words, it is hard to let it go, but I know I have other things that are similar that I can use. So I try and keep that in mind as well. What else I have that will do the same job. Okay, that one is pretty full. There's a little bit of room, probably a couple more sets could fit in there, and then it's gonna be full house again. So box number six, we have travel, animals, and summer. So I could probably force these two sets into the animal section, but it is tight. So I'm gonna see if there's anything that I can purge. Well, I was able to make some room in there. I pulled out these three haven't used them in ages, so I think it should be safe to purge those. So here is my people and birthdays box. You can see I have some really large stamps on the top here, these cling stamps. Those I mostly use for like art journaling and things, but I don't think I have to purge anything. I have this whole side for birthday, I make a lot of birthday cards, so those can fit right in there. So this box is where some change needs to happen. <laughs> this is my Christmas box. I love Christmas sets. And of course I do a lot of cards and stuff at Christmas. So I went a little crazy this past Christmas and I, I bought a lot. I bought a lot of Stampin' Thing cuts for Christmas. I really like them so I don't wanna get rid of them, which means I need to go through these and see what I can get rid of. I'm gonna start by going through my other brands here at the front. I haven't used some of these. This one I'm never getting rid of. That's a gorgeous scripty Merry Christmas. Good little sentiments, good snowflakes. See, it's just, it's just not very easy. So here's an example. 
Here's an e.l.f. set that I got a few years ago. It's fairly recent. This uh, die actually cuts out around his little end of his hat there and then the sign or the presence can go over top, but he has no face. That's a really fun set. I like it, but this year I bought this set, which has full elves and I think it's a little bit more flexible for, with what, you know, what I can do with them. So I think I might get rid of that one and put this one in instead. Now here's a set that's hard. This is quite the old set. Uh, it's called Share the Magic and it has, I don't know if you guys can even see, it has really cutesy Christmas images. There's a little waving snowman, a little reindeer. I've used it a lot, that's why it's so stained. But to me, I almost think it's out of style now. I don't know, it's hard to say if I will end up using that again. I got this one, le like not this past year, but the year before last, and this is definitely more my style, kind of a very classic type Santa as opposed to a cutesy one. But who knows, with Isabella, maybe I want a more cutesy Santa Claus. I don't have a ton in my stash. So this is gonna be a maybe. Okay, now something like this, where this was an older set and I love the pine cones and the little pine branch, but I have this set, which is newer, that has thin cuts. So I have thin cuts for both those pine branches, the birds, at the pine cones. So this definitely wins, keep this, get rid of that. Well, I found two sets that were filed in the wrong box. These need to go in box number five. I got all of those stamps in there and I purged all of these to make that happen. So that's a lot to get rid of in this category, but it is still full. <laughs> so when it comes to this upcoming Christmas, there's a lot of sets that I really love and wanna keep. I'm gonna to have to do an even more brutal purge. All right, you guys, we did it. Look at that. Getting rid of a good chunk of stamps here. Very proud of myself. And uh, now I just have to go through Evernote, take them out of my inventory, and then find something to do with them. I've donated stamps before, I've given them away, I've sold them for super cheap. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with these, but they need to go somewhere out of my house. And thanks for hanging out with me. If you guys enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And uh, maybe share down in the comments with me what you like to do with your stamps. If you like to purge or not, you keep everything you buy. I'd love to hear about it and I'll see you next time. Bye.